in this section we will be discussing the types of germination There are two types. First is known as epigeal germination. Which is seen in case of dicot seeds. And the second is known as hypogeal germination. And this is seen in monocot seeds. Now let us understand what exactly we mean by these two terms. Geal word is related to the soil or ground. And epi is above the ground and hypogeal is below ground. Once we understand what exactly happens during this process of germination, we will understand why this term has been given to this type of germination. Suppose this is the soil surface and when we sow the seeds and when we put it inside the soil, say this is the seed which has been put inside and we are drawing the dicot seed and that's why I have drawn a bean here. So when we say dicot seed, the examples that we can take of lima beans, gram, P, etc. All dicot seeds. So here this bean has been put under the ground. It has been sown. Now when it germinates we have seen the process also and we know it is the radical which is going to emerge first. Before we come to this let us draw a small structure of the dicot seed to understand the various parts when we draw a dicot seed, this is the embryonal axis and attached to this embryonal axis is this cotyledon. So there are two cotyledons as we are talking of the dicot seeds. Let us label these parts and we need to know these parts very well because that is what is going to help us these two processes properly. So this part of the embryonal axis to which these two cotyledons are attached. That means this highlighted part. This is known as cotyledonary node. The part which is highlighted at the top, this is the plumule. And this tip is the radical. Now there are two parts remaining. The part which is between plumule and the cotyledonary node. That means this upper highlighted part. This part is known as epicotyl or sometimes it is also uh, pronounced as epicotyl. Similarly, there is one part which is between the cotyledonary node and the radical. This part is known as hypocotyl or hypocotyl. Let me write it here. Hypocotyl or hypocotyl. Now, when we talk about the germination of the dicot seeds, what is going to happen is emergence. That means the radical is going to emerge. So, say this is the part which is emerging and this highlighted lower part is the radical and the upper part is this part that is the hypocotyl. Now, after some time, the seed will elongate and when we say seed elongates, it is the hypocotyl part which is going to elongate. So, this highlighted part is again hypocotyl. So now hypocotyl is going to elongate. Let us see what happens when hypocotyl elongates. It becomes longer. That means it is going to grow on the upper side also and on the lower side also. So when it grows on the upper side, now this becomes the elongated 
hypocotyl and because of this elongation of hypocotyl the part which was above it has been pushed up and the part which was below it has been pushed down that means the radical has been pushed down further down and this entire part which was attached above it this cartilaginary part which is above it has been pushed upwards so this part that is the cartilagin part it comes above the surface this is going to continue and these cartilagins they come out completely due to elongation of this hypocotyl it is still elongated so it is pushing the seed up and the radical down so this is the radical which has gone even down and the seed with the cartilagin part has moved up and this part which is elongated is the hypocotyl because of this what has happened is when we sowed the seed inside the soil the first elongation takes place due to hypocotyl hypocotyl is lower part here this part now when this part elongates it pushes the radical down and this part up so seed or cartilages are taken up and they come out of the ground or soil surface and that is why the term epi that is for above and gl is for ground so the cartilages they come out of the soil that is why epigl germination and the reason for this type of growth is elongation of elongation of hypocotyl or hypocotyl so initial seed elongation in case of dicot seeds takes place due to hypocotyl elongation and because of which the cartilages they come out of the ground level and that is why the dicot seeds must be sown 3 to 4 inches below the ground surface because if we put these seeds just on the surface within few days those cartilages would come out of the ground surface and cartilagin is the part where reserve food material is stored and if all those cartilages with that reserve food material comes out then it would be consumed or eaten up by birds or animals like squirrels but when this happens towards the later stage then most of the nourishment has been utilized or would get utilized and this is the time when the plumule would also emerge after this it will produce the leaves and this can provide uh, or produce its own food so dependence on that reserve material would be gone so this is what happens in case of epigeal germination which is a characteristic feature of dicot seeds now let us talk about hypogeal germination which is again a characteristic feature of monocots again this is the soil surface and in monocots we can take the example like maize so when we sow maize grain the elongation takes place or this growth takes place due to elongation of plumule and radical this is monocot so there is a slight difference we don't have plumule and radical instead the structures are known as coleoptile and coleorhiza so if we make this grain slightly bigger to understand which structure is present where this is the seed and this part is the starch and here is the protein that is eluron protein and the embryo is in this lower part it is a monocot that means there is a single cotyledon and the embryonal axis has the same radical and plumule but they are covered with scales and that is why there are different names given to it this is known as coleoptile and 
the radical covered with scales is known as coleorrhiza. The parts of embryonal axis which are below the coleoptile, this is epicotyle and this part which is just between the cotyledonary node and the coleorrhiza. This is the hypocotyle. So the parts are same as in case of dicot uh, seeds but in dicot we talk of directly plumule and radical and here we are talking of coleoptile and coleorrhiza because plumule and radical are covered with scales. Now when the seed has to germinate it is the coleoptile which is going to elongate and coleorrhiza. So what we see here is the coleoptile coming out and coleorrhiza. So the two parts that is coleoptile and coleorrhiza they are visible and now the elongation is going to be separate of coleoptile and coleorrhiza. So the seed remains or the grain remains where it is. This coleoptile elongates and moves upwards and coleorrhiza grows deeper into the soil. This continues. The grain still remains where it was and now we start seeing the coleoptile emerging and the leaves form and this coleorrhiza has gone deeper. That means the epicotyl hypocotyl parts which were in this region they are still here and this seed elongation or the formation of the baby plant or seedling which is taking place is due to elongation of coleoptile and radical or coleorrhiza individually. So this is coleoptile and this is coleorrhiza. So in case of dicot seeds, the initial elongation was due to elongation of hypocotyle and here the elongation is due to separately that is of coleoptile and coleorrhiza. Coleoptile and coleorrhiza. And as we can see that the grain or the seed, it remains underground. It doesn't come out of the ground surface. And that is why the term hypo. Hypo is below and geal is again for the soil or ground surface. So the difference between the two, that is dicot seeds and monocot seeds is germination process is same. But in case of dicot seeds, the development of hypocotyle takes place first or elongation of hypocotyle takes place first due to which the structure which is above hypocotyle is pushed upwards and the structure below it that is radical is pushed down. Because of this actual change the cotyledons they come out of the ground surface and so this germination is known as epigeal germination. Whereas in case of monocot seeds Hypocotyle or epicotyle, they do not play any significant role in the elongation of the seedling. This elongation takes place due to coleoptile and coleorrhiza elongating separately. And because of which the cotyledons or the seed does not come out of the ground surface. So these are the two types of germinations which we see. One is in dicot, that is epigeal, other is in monocots, that is hypogeal germination.